make hyper-real estate cakes of everyday objects. And usually, I make them life-size. I've made a life-size apple, a life-size boot, even a life-size lava lamp. But today, I'm going mini with the help of Miniverse. Can you guys even see that? Even these directions are mini. My name is Natalie Sidesurf and I make cakes that don't look like cakes. And today, I'm going to make a Miniverse toy you can eat. Here I've got myself Miniverse Make It Mini Food. This ball includes all the tiny ingredients I'll need to assemble my mini meal. And I'm going to make edible replicas of each and every ingredient. Then I will assemble them all to make my very own edible mini meal. My goal today is to make my edible version look just like the toy. I don't want you guys to be able to tell the difference between the two. Every ingredient comes in its own unmarked packaging, so I have no clue what's in any of these. I can't wait to open them and see all the little ingredients. So it looks like it came with this little white table that isn't in any packaging, a little bonus. I wasn't expecting a table. And here we have directions on how to assemble the mini meal. I am going to follow these. I wanna do this properly. No going rogue today even though I do that sometimes. This is my plan, I'm gonna stick to my plan. What if I try this? All right, so here we have all my little packages. Anybody uh, notice anything? Anything weird about these packages? What is this? This blue one looks like it's already been opened and I didn't open it. <laughs> This is how this one came right out of the ball. It's already opened on one end and it's empty. I don't understand. <laughs> how could this happen? I gotta look this up. What is happening here? Make it mini brains. Hmm. Okay, so there's supposed to be little mini tongs in this. Mine's empty. Looks like we had a mistake in the factory. I don't know what's going on, but I don't have any tongs. I think that the tongs are just for assembling, so I don't think this is gonna ruin anything. I hope this doesn't ruin anything. This is the only miniverse I have. <laughs> Maybe I should have bought two. It feels like there's objects in each of the rest of the packets, and none of the rest of the packaging is opened, so I'm just gonna continue. Let's cross our fingers that we've got everything else we need. Let's get to opening the first package. I can't wait to see what I get. Oh my, look at these little burger buns. They come wrapped up in a little plastic bag and everything. Ah, <laughs> so cute. I did not expect that. I thought it was just gonna be, you know, like burger buns. I didn't know they'd have their own little packaging. This is so fun. I love it. Let's open it up. Let's get these buns out of the bag. It even has one of those little bread bag clips. Uh, I'm dead. Let's have a look at these buns. They do not disappoint. They look just like real buns. They're so cute. Now, how to make an edible version of these buns? To make an edible version of these buns, I'm gonna make a mold of the top and the bottom. So I'm covering both in blue molding putty. And now all I have to do is let that putty set. The putty is firm. Let's pop out those buns. These molds look fantastic. I need these buns to be pretty sturdy. I need them to hold their shape. So I'm gonna fill these molds with yellow chocolate because chocolate is strong. It's not gonna smush like some other options. Typically when I recreate edible versions of things that are this small, I have a really hard time. Working at such a tiny scale is difficult, especially when you're using food. But so far, so good. This seems to be working out. Now I'm just gonna let the chocolate cool. Now let's pop our chocolate buns out of the molds. And they look great. We are off to a great start. Yeah, woo, yeah. We still have a lot of ingredients to go, but these are looking good. I'm hand painting all these tiny little white seeds. It's so fun to paint such a tiny little bun. The buns are done. Let's open the next package. And the next ingredient is it's not even an ingredient at all. It's a little board, like a cutting board. And look at the detail. It even has a wood grain texture. I'm into this. They really switched it up. So rather than using a plate, we're using like a, a wooden board. It's great. So I'm going to replicate this board in modeling chocolate. I'm putting on gloves that are clearly far too large for me. And I'm adding brown food color to white modeling chocolate. I actually don't have any brown modeling chocolate on hand. So I got to color it myself. This white powder stuff, that is 
cornstarch. And that is gonna help keep the modeling chocolate from getting too sticky. I love modeling chocolate, but when you're working with it at such a small scale, it gets very melty and soft. And as I'm trimming the chocolate, I can already tell that things are pretty soft and sticky. Uh-oh. I knew there was a chance this was gonna happen. I was like 60-40, but I wanted to try anyway. The modeling chocolate is sticking and it's really hard to pull away. I almost had it, but there are some major imperfections here. The modeling chocolate is just too soft, so I'm gonna have to come up with something else. And now for a special announcement. I've got a lot of fun stuff coming up, and I'm gonna let you guys know about it soon, but not quite yet. But you can sign up for my newsletter at sidesurfcakes.com, and you will be the first to know. Modeling chocolate is just too soft, so I'm gonna have to come up with something else. And I'm thinking I should probably make a mold. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm making a mold of the board and I'm gonna fill it with chocolate. So you have your regular chocolate, like chocolate chips and chocolate bars, and then you have modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate is like edible clay. It's really, really neat. It's soft, it's pliable, and it's great for a lot of things when it comes to cake. It's not gonna work to replicate this tiny board though. This tiny chocolate board is going to be very thin. So I'm a little bit nervous that when I take it out of the mold, it might crack. So I'm gonna pop it in the fridge to let it cool and we'll come back to that. In the meantime, let's check out our next ingredient. All right, let's open this one up and it looks like we have some ketchup. It's a little ketchup squeeze bottle. So it looks like you can open this and it has this like paper thing wrapped around it. Let's see what that's about. It is a warning letting us know, do not eat. <laughs> do not eat this one. This one is not edible. I'm making edible versions, but this, no, we're not eating this one. <laughs> so let's have a look at this inedible ketchup. Ah, I did not expect that. It's gooey. How cool is that? Let's squeeze some out. Let's see what it looks like out of the bottle. It's a little bit see-through and it reminds me of a red syrup. So for my edible version of this ketchup, I'm going to use clear corn syrup. And to make it red, I'm mixing in a little bit of red food color. And I know ketchup isn't typically see-through, but I'm trying to make this look just like the toy. So let's compare the two. Here is my edible ketchup next to the inedible ketchup. That is really, really close. I think it's looking good. I'm gonna have to keep these two separate from each other so I don't mix them up. Ketchup's looking good, let's move on. On to our next ingredient. Here we've got this pink package. Let's open her up. What? Just when I think things can't get any cuter. There are little tiny tomatoes and lettuce in here. This is a cute overload. And a twofer. I got two things in this one. How am I gonna recreate this lettuce? Hmm. Let's start with the tomatoes. These tomatoes are a little bendy and they remind me of something. What to use? The tomatoes look like they're made of fruit snacks. I'm totally gonna use a fruit snack. I have fruit by the foot on hand. <laughs> I don't know if you know this about me, but I really, really like fruit snacks. I think the fruit by the foot is a little too thin, so I'm folding it up and layering it. I have a round piping tip that is a similar size to the tomatoes, so I'm using that to punch out circles. <laughs> and it totally worked. Fruit snack tomatoes is my favorite thing. Now I just gotta paint the little design on each tomato. To the lettuce. I think my best option here is gonna be fondant. Modeling chocolate will be too soft, but fondant is a sugar paste, so it doesn't get all melty. I think this might work. I'm using sculpting tools to get that fondant as thin as I can, and I'm hand sculpting all the little details. I'm pressing a ball tool all along the edge to get that fondant super, super thin. And I'm actually kind of impressed by this. <laughs> it looks better than I thought it was going to. My edible lettuce really looks like the toy lettuce. Now I just gotta paint it green. I don't have any bright green food color right now, so I'm going for a more natural green. My lettuce is gonna look natural. It's an earthy green. <laughs> lettuce is done, let's see what's next. I am having so much fun not knowing what I'm gonna get next. Let's see what we've got. 
It's cheese! <laughs> Would you look at these baby cheeses? These are really neat. They're super thin. They're almost like rubbery. They might be made of rubber. I don't know. <laughs> I got a little gift to them. <laughs> so I'm thinking to recreate these thin cheeses, I'm gonna use edible paper. Edible paper is thin and it's gonna keep that square shape. And to make it that yellow orange cheese color, I just have to paint on a thin layer of food color. You gotta get both sides. I love this cheese. Every time I think, it's not gonna get any better than this miniature thing, but then you get a new miniature thing, and that is just as cute as the previous miniature thing. Am I disappointed that I'm not gonna be able to assemble all these ingredients with my miniature tongs? A little bit, yeah. All right, let's open up the next package. We've made so many ingredients, what could this one possibly be? Oh! <laughs> Of course. The beef patties, of course. I really appreciate how all of these ingredients have been packaged. So fun to open. The details! There's even little grill marks on each patty. Okay, so I think I know how I'm gonna recreate these. And you might be thinking, Natalie, what are you doing? You already messed this up once with the wooden board earlier. But... I'm gonna try anyway. I'm gonna recreate these patties using modeling chocolate in a very similar way to the way I did earlier with the board, but I think this time it's gonna work. I just have a hunch. I think because it's circular, it's gonna keep its shape better. But I have been wrong before. A lot, I've been wrong a lot. With this one, I'm adding the texture and then cutting out the round shape. I think that's gonna help make this work. And now I'm carefully cutting out the circle. It is sticky. <laughs> the edges are a little messy, but I can clean those up. Now I gotta paint this patty the correct brown. It's a little too warm. And this beef Beef patty is a success. The modeling chocolate worked for this one. But how does the wooden board look? I haven't taken it out of the mold yet. Okay, let's try to pop this chocolate out of the mold. It's so thin. I hope it doesn't crack. Careful now. Oh! Oh, look how good it looks! So much better than when I tried to use modeling chocolate. And guess what? We have everything we need to assemble this mini edible food. I am really happy with the way that each edible mini ingredient looks, but I have no clue how this is gonna look assembled. Will my edible version look just like the toy? Cause that's what I really want. <laughs> this is really the moment of truth here. Let's see how it turned out. And there you have it, an edible miniverse cheeseburger. Working at such a small scale was really difficult, but also really fun. And I think that my edible version looks pretty close to the real one. All right, it's time to cut it. This one was really, really fun to make. I think my favorite part is the fruit snack tomatoes. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post a brand new cake every week and I'll see you next week for another cake.